Hey everybody, Steve here. Welcome to the video. And as you can see, I am back in the Tahoe for the first time in a long time. A lot of people are sending me emails and making comments about how I'm not making Tahoe videos anymore. And the reason for that is because the Tahoe hasn't needed anything at all. But uh, alas, a problem has cropped up and it might end up being something small and it might end up being something big. So here we go. I have no idea where this is gonna take us, but let's go ahead and dive in. Yesterday I noticed this guy coming on, uh, and it's running a little bit rough, nothing that I could demonstrate for you. But if we come down to the handy dandy dash command, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and select diagnostics. And there is, let's see here, there is our stored code. And if I hit the stored code, we have Oh, uh, the dreaded P300 random cylinder misfires. All right, so uh, that is basically the indicator of a needle in a haystack. So uh, that's why I said I have no idea where this video is going, whether it's going to be just a video or whether it's going to become a whole series of videos. So let's talk P300 or P0300. P0300 has to do with, as it states, a random misfire. Well, a misfire is occurring in the combustion chamber. So in the most basic of all explanations, our engines need several things to run. Uh, it needs gas, it needs spark, and it needs air. So the P0300 could be one of anything that falls into any three of those camps. So if we break these things down into three categories, spark, air, and fuel, First thing that comes to mind is spark. We're gonna take a look at the spark plugs. We're gonna take a look at the spark plug wires. We're gonna take a look at the coils, make sure everything is firing the way they're supposed to be, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, like I said, keeping this very high level. So second category is fuel. Uh, that would be fuel pump, fuel filter, fuel injectors. And then the third category, air, uh, I'm gonna probably wanna take a look at vacuum issues and make sure that I don't have any vacuum leaks in the engine or something like that. Other culprits that could cause this issue, um, we could take a look at the O2 sensors, and we can also look at the crank position sensor, amongst other things. So P0300 is kind of like a needle in a haystack. It basically says, hey, there's the haystack. Now go figure out what the problem is. So that's what we're going to do with some further diagnosis. Oh, by the way, full disclosure, I am not a professional mechanic. I'm not even a regular mechanic. I'm just a regular DIY guy with a lot of patience and maybe a little extra time on my hands during COVID. And I'm going to see if I can't get to the bottom of this by myself. All right, so what I'm running right now is HP tuners to try to help me monitor some of the stuff to see if I can't uh, more closely figure out which direction the problem is or to see if it's multiple problems. Monitoring a bunch of fuel stuff, and I'm monitoring misfires. I'm monitoring O2s and my fuel trims. Um, I don't really know what I'm doing here, so uh, but we're just going to go with it. And I'm going to take this car for a little drive. And away we go. All right, here's a little bit of uh, after the fact audio uh, that I'm adding while I'm watching the video. Uh, let me reiterate that I really don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, and if you're watching this and you've got some uh, um, something to say, please feel free to say it in the comments if I'm overlooking something. Uh, but the first thing that comes to mind as far as what I'm seeing right here is uh, the long-term bank two. Uh, is is way out of whack and needs to be looked at. Uh, as far as the video is concerned, we're at a point right now where uh, in a few seconds I'm getting ready to do a hard acceleration so that you can see uh, the misfires. Okay. Pretty good indicator there on uh, cylinder six. Ooh, cylinder two. Okay, a little bit more after the fact audio here. As previously mentioned, it looks like uh, my culprits are uh, six for sure and uh, two, uh, as well as that long term bank two seems to be a problem. Uh, as I'm looking at the O2 sensors, if I'm interpreting them correctly, uh, they're working as intended. Uh, but if I'm wrong, or if you see anything else, please do me a favor, pipe up in the comments, let us know. All right, back to the video. Because I have a vacuum gauge, and I cut into one of the lines to make a T for the gauge, 
I have this end cap right here that is cracked. And this is probably not helping my situation any. So I'm gonna be sure to get uh, a new one of these and fix that. All right, so in an effort to go after some low hanging fruit, I found a place to test vacuum and let's see how it looks. All right, holding that there and seem to be in an okay range. All right, vacuum, looks good. All right, so uh, another thing that I did off camera was I checked all the connections of all of my vacuum uh, hoses going into the engine and all of the connections seem to be fine. Uh, that doesn't rule out per se a vacuum issue. I may, I might have a vacuum issue uh, around the mating surface of the intake manifold. Uh, I can spray that with water maybe later and see if that nets me anything. But right now I'm going to take a closer look at spark. All right, so in an effort to try to go after some potential spark issues, I'm going to grab the timing light and this guy right here. I'm just trying to put him on one of the spark plug wires like so. And then essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to... All right, so let me turn on the engine and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here's the timing light. And you, now that does not look like it's blinking very much, and that is because of the limitation of the 30 frames per second on the camera. But the reality is, is that maybe if I, it is working. I'm getting a, I can see the pulses, but the reality is that it is working. I can see the pulses. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this on every single one of spark plug wires and see if uh, I see anything that might be dead. All right, so the driver's side bank was fine. I'm gonna move over to the passenger side. All right, so I'm on cylinder six and I got nothing. Absolutely nothing off the cylinder six. I'm gonna go ahead and check eight and then uh, see what the deal is. All right, that's eight. Eight is good, but six, not giving me anything. So I'm gonna start there with my troubleshooting. All right, I'm coming back and I'm checking two because, you know, HP tuners indicated that two is a problem, but but according to this, two's doing all right. All right, so this thing's running red hot right now and there's no way I'm gonna be getting close to any of those uh, spark plugs through those long tube headers. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, give the engine an opportunity to cool off. I'm gonna go ahead and get it in the air. All right, passenger side wheel well. The tire's off and I took the big piece of plastic off and uh, it only took about five minutes. If you ever have to do spark plug work on these cars, um, you're not gonna find an easier way to access the spark plugs than uh, getting all that crap out of the way, especially number eight. Number eight is particularly difficult, especially with long tube headers, you can't even see it. I might have to take off, uh, I might take that heat shield as well. But if I pull out here some, you will see you've got amazing access to the spark plugs. Uh, if you ever have to work on your AC compressor, you got access to that. Um, actually makes uh, working on the starter a little bit easier. So uh, yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull um, spark plugs on this side and see what they look like. See if number six and uh, number two look any different from the rest. Check how they're gapped. And uh, yeah, and I don't know, I don't know. We'll see what happens there. If, uh, that doesn't turn up any, um, if that doesn't turn up any clues, then we'll start moving coils around and see if uh, our spark issue uh, persists. Pretty tired, so if I'm not making any sense. Um, um, I'll, I'll, I'll recap it here when I get the uh, spark plugs out. All right, so here's number six's wire. Does not seem to be cut anywhere. And the ends, it's got a metal contact in there. Here's the other end. No burns, no cuts. There's the contact there. So, go ahead and take a look at the spark plug. Admittingly so, I am a beginner in the spark plug reading department, uh, but one thing that I noticed about all four spark plugs is that uh, they seem to have exact, pretty much even wear. Uh, they all look the same, and from what I read, there weren't any telltale signs of too much oil, too little oil, or 
antifreeze in the oil or water in the oil. Didn't see any of that. And as far as gapping was concerned, they were all gapped within spec. I guess I'm going to dismiss spark plugs as the problem. All right, all the plugs and wires are back in. Change the order of a couple of them so that if the situation, so if that the problem moves, I'll be able to more easily diagnose them. And I made a list of what went where, just in case. If my problem goes to cylinder four, I'll know it was a plug. If my problem goes to cylinder eight, I'll know it was the wire. If the problem stays at six, then I know that I need to continue my testing. Okay, so here's where we're at. Uh, I have loosened up uh, coil number four and the trouble coil, which is number six. And I'm going to swap the two and see if the problem follows the coil. If the problem doesn't follow, follow the coil, then I guess I can rule out the coil. And I'll just have to keep going. All right, so the coils have been swapped. And now this is on cylinder four. And the little thing is on. And the light ain't doing nothing. All right, so that's a good indication that it's a coil. Now, if I can get this off with one hand and get it on Mr. Six. All right, so now it's on six. We got light. So six has now got light. Six is now sparking. And four, which was fine earlier, better than a doornail. So, I'm thinking that's the culprit right there. All right, quick trip to the auto parts store and picked up this guy right here. Master Pro, whatever. It's the only one they had. Um, there it is, the new one. You can see the difference between the new one and the old one. And I'm going to go ahead and install the new one along with the rest of the ones that work and see what we see. All right, so here we have the brand new one. The brand new one is giving us pulses. And this is what, this is cylinder six right here. Looking good. All right, I am feeling pretty good about the fact that the, that was uh, a major contributor to my uh, P0300 code. Hopefully we'll be able to uh, reset everything, go out, take a drive, and not get stupid codes anymore. Ready to get on the highway. Okay, so I'm back doing my usual post video review overdub and uh, I'm not exactly sure what we're looking at right this second, but uh, one thing to call to your attention is the, uh, the fact that after that big rev up, there were zero, zero misfires whatsoever. I'm also happy to report that long term bank two seems to be perfectly under control at this point. So let me reiterate that uh, I am by no means knowledgeable in reading all of this stuff. Uh, I have a very basic understanding of what I'm looking at here. And uh, if you have a really good understanding of what we're looking at here and you care to chime in, please, by all means, leave comments. I'd like to learn from this experience and share the learning experience with anybody who might be watching. So anyhow, that is a wrap on this thing. I will report that the Tahoe is eh, it's probably running better than it has ever. Ever. All right, so as far as car videos are concerned for the rest of 2020, I don't want to lose my entire Tahoe audience, uh, but I've got to own up to the fact that I broke my foot in two places, dislocated it in two other places. I am bedridden for the next month, and from there I will be... Uh, in a cast for a month and from there I'll be in a boot 
for a month. So this is going to severely delay the turbo install. But please do me a favor, don't go anywhere. Stick around. For those of you who haven't subscribed, subscribe to the channel. And for those of you who already subscribe to the channel and for the newcomers, please do me a favor and uh, hit the little bell so that you get notifications on future videos when they come out. Uh, because when I am well and I have a little bit of cash to spend, I am going to be doing that turbo install. See if we can't get this Tahoe into the mid fives or whatever. Um, so anyhow, that's the plans for the future for the Tahoe. And, uh, I appreciate you staying with me till the end on this video. I'm Steve signing off and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. See ya.